Hi guys, I'm Laura Coyle, and I've got a tutorial here for you on working with Rich Black in Adobe Illustrator. So say you're working on a print project and you start out with a default black swatch, and then you move on to creating your own rich black swatch. And then maybe your client lets you know that they prefer a different formula for rich black. And then suddenly you realize you have three different shades of black in your file and you need to convert them all into that one rich black formula that your client has specified. So this video is going to show you how to do that in recolor artwork. I'm here in Adobe Illustrator 2020, and I will assume that you already know what rich black is and why you would want to use it in printing, and that you already know how to make custom color swatches in Illustrator. That way I can just jump right into showing you how I use recolor artwork to consolidate different versions of black in your Illustrator file. So this is a Halloween illustration I've created, and as you can see, there's a lot of black in this art. And in the main background of this wall that I have selected is a rich black that was specified by the printer. And I already have a swatch for it. It's highlighted in the swatches panel. And if I double click it, we can see the formula for this swatch is CMYK 50, 50, 50, and 100. So that's the color swatch that's applied to most of the black in this art, but there are a few objects that are different. So if I go here and select this cat, for instance, we can see it looks a little bit lighter and it's linked to this color swatch in my swatches panel. If I double click on it to look at its formula, I can see 0, 0, 0, and 100. So this is just the default black swatch from Illustrator. It's not a rich black. And that same color swatch is being used on this sort of evil pumpkin man over here, as we can see, there's the swatch highlighted. And in the color panel, we can see the formula 0, 0, 0, and 100. And the same default shade of black is still probably lurking elsewhere in my file. So we can use recolor artwork to change everything that's supposed to be solid black into that one rich black that our printer has specced. So to do this, I'm going to just select all using the shortcut Command or Control A. Now I have all of the artwork in my file, and then I can just go up to the Recolor Artwork button to open the panel here. So what we're seeing here is Illustrator has sort of captured all of the color in this file. We can see there are some of the shades of black there and then shades of dark gray all the way down to white here. And basically what these color bars mean, the ones on the left are the before of recoloring, the ones on the right are the after of recoloring, meaning these colors will be recolored into these colors in this column. Right now the colors on both sides are identical, and that's just because we're starting out. So when I open the recolor artwork panel to begin, especially in a case like this, I like to click on this icon here and open up the color reduction options panel just to make sure that these settings are right for this situation. The preserve checkboxes should be unchecked, especially for black. We don't want to prevent black from being recolored in this artwork. We definitely want to recolor the black, so make sure this is unchecked. Then secondly, the colorize method should be exact. The alternative is for Illustrator to create tints and or tints and shades of the color. And because we're looking at changing the default black in this evil pumpkin man into the really rich black here in the background, Illustrator might interpret these two things as shades of one another, and we don't want that confusion. We want this to be changed into exactly 100% of our new rich black color. So leave the colorize method set to exact. And then under colors, this is just sort of an extra step I like to take sometimes. Because Illustrator does some automatic things here inside of recolor artwork, which are very often really helpful. But in this case, we're really just trying to take things exactly as they are. And so I like to just click on all here, just to make sure that every color in this file has the potential for being recolored. So I don't miss anything. Then I'm gonna click OK. And now I'll just scroll down to where the black shades are here. And we can see there are three of them. Everything down here is just really a shade of dark gray. 
But these are the three colors in the art that we need to make sure are that 50, 50, 50, 100 rich black. So if I click on this first one, you can see two of them are combined on one row here. This first one is a 000 100. So that is one of the default shades of black. And then if I click on this one, I see it is also 000 100, also another default shade of black. In this next bar here, we have one of the rich black, 50, 50, 50, 100. And in this next bar here, we have 50, 50, 50, 100. So both of these rows here are just fine. We're gonna leave them as is. And this is the one row that we need to recolor. So our way of recoloring this row is going to be just to take each individual color on the row and drag it down to the one below. So we're dragging these default shades of black down to the row with the rich black. So this row is empty now and you can see the arrow here is dimmed so this will not be recolored, but everything that we've combined on this row will be recolored into that rich black. Now notice with that change that I've made, you can see this figure here and the cat are now that darker black. I'm not sure if you can really see it because it's on my screen, it's, it was very subtle before, but hopefully you can see the difference and now these look like they are the correct version of black. And one last thing, before I click OK to complete this change, just notice that here in the swatches panel, which we can see sort of here behind the recolor artwork panel, I have a pattern swatch right here. This is a seamless repeating pattern fill that actually has a texture on it that's used throughout this file. You can see some of it here on the front porch. And this is really the reason that I like to use recolor artwork for this task. And that's because recolor artwork leaves no stone unturned in your file or no color unturned. It looks for color in not only solid fills, but also pattern fills and gradient stops. And it can change all of those colors in your file as well. So wherever we've changed the default black, which is actually inside of this pattern fill here, Illustrator is now going to update this pattern fill. So the texture is also in rich black. So now watch when I click OK, we're gonna see Illustrator creates a second pattern swatch here. So we have the original one that's named Speckled Texture and then the newly created one, which is called Speckled Texture 2. Okay, so now I'm gonna deselect and just look at everything looks good in my file, but just to sort of give you that little bit of perspective here, if I go um, to the original Speckled Texture and just double click on this swatch, it's going to open up the pattern options panel. It's going to open up that pattern there. And if I just click on one of these little speckles here, we can see in the color panel, there's the default black. Now I'll go back out. And this time I'll double click on the second texture swatch, the new one that was created by recolor artwork and open it. And recolor artwork just added that two to the end of the name. And if I select one of the speckles, we can see it's 50, 50, 50, 100 rich black. And now I'll just exit out of here by clicking this arrow. And Recolor Artwork automatically applied that new pattern swatch to my art. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you want more information, I have a course on Recolor Artwork that I have on my Teachable site, and you can find the links to that at the end of the video. And also, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe, and thank you for watching.